Hello YouTube family and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I am an acrylic artist. So if you're here, you're ready to paint with acrylics with me today. So the design that we're painting today is going to be a fun one because I have just been so ready to get my Christmas decorations out and it's not even Thanksgiving yet. So I just could not wait to get them out. So I've got a great design for you that you can paint and get ready to get your Christmas decorating done. This is my hot cocoa and peppermint design. It is on my oval ornament plaque. You can get that on my website lanalam.com as well as the buffalo check stencil and the snowflake stencil that we use on the cup right there. This is going to be a fun, fun project to paint. Um, I am going to be using Deco Art Americana acrylic paints, but you can use whatever acrylic paint you want. You can paint it in oils, you can paint it in whatever paints you want, but those are the paints I'll be using. So let's grab our paints and brushes and let's get started. Okay, I started this project on a different recording device and it did not work out so I am starting it now thankfully I didn't get too far into the project um, so I'll tell you how I got to this point um, I applied uh, a coat of multi-purpose sealer with a damp artist sponge on the surface and then uh, two coats of lamp black with the damp artist sponge. You can use a damp two inch foam roller as well. Uh, whatever you have. I was using a sponge for something else so I just used it. Normally I would just use the roller because it's so much faster. Okay and then I transferred on just these pattern lines. The cup and the peppermint sticks and the bow. And just some lines to tell me where my pine will be here later. The bow and the topper I base coated in with gray sky. Um, my second coat was just a wash, just to kind of fill in some of the open gaps where I could still see some black because red doesn't go over black very well. And now I'm painting on um, tomato red. I'm going to apply two coats. So far I've only got one coat on the outer edge. The peppermint sticks I have uh, uh, undercoated with oyster beige. The inside of our hot chocolate here is cobblestone and the cup is Blue Haven. Two coats on each one. So um, I'm just working on finishing up this first coat on my bow and then I'm going to let it dry and apply my second coat so we can come back and start working on getting this all done. And uh, I like to paint in my sections, each one on their own, so that I can retain all of those shapes and I don't have to come back in and uh, put my graphite lines back on here because I can tell exactly where each part of the bow is. So um, that is a very important tip to remember when you're base coating. I always add a little bit of water to my paint. Yeah, I've got that too narrow on that side, I think. And that way, oops, stuck my hand in there. That way, my paints are nice and some, you know, they're, it's, the paint is just a tiny bit thinner than it comes out of the bottle, and it gives me nice, smooth paints. I can load a lot of paint into my brush this way and um, smooth it out because the paint stays wet longer. And I love having the black background for Christmas designs. Plus, if we put paint somewhere we don't want it or too far out or anything that we need to adjust with a black background, so easy to clean up any edges and um, get that stuff cleaned up easily. Okay, so I am going to let this first coat dry, get a second coat on, so you can you can see clearly where each section of that bow is. And um, then we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and erase my graphite lines around my ribbon. And then we're gonna come back and begin adding some fun details onto this. Alright, I got all my second coats on everything. It's all done. 
And so now we're going to do some stenciling on this. I'm going to um, stencil on my cup. I have a new snowflake stencil here, and so I want to pick some of these smaller snowflakes and put on here. And I'm not going to worry about getting paint in my background. Um, if I do, I can clean it up because it's just straight black paint for the background. So we're going to take some white, some fresh white. And we'll need a dry paper towel and a stencil brush. This is a 3 8 inch Dynasty Pro. I love these stencil brushes. They're my favorites. I sell the half inch size, which is this one. This one I probably use more than any other size that I have. So um, I do sell that one. So we're going to load our stencil brush up with some paint. And I'm going to remove some of it and then just figure out where I want to stencil. Now, if you need to um, grab my tape out here. If, if you need to tape off any area of your stencil, just put some scotch tape over any area that you don't want to get paint on. But I'm just going to go for it here. And my brush is straight up and down. Gentle pressure here. And there we got one snowflake on our cup, and I'm going to move around, and this one's a little bit different. I'm just going to put part of it coming off the side over here. Snowflake there, and then this one's a little bitty one. I think I'll squeeze it in here. go all the way across the cup just figuring out what snowflakes I want to use. I think I will use this is a bigger one here but I think I'll put it out coming off the edge over here. I'm load my brush with some more paint here and offload. little bitty ones kind of coming off the edge there. Maybe a star kind of snowflake thing there. And then put this bigger one up here. And just be creative with where you place your snowflakes and what side you use. It's it's all up to you and what you like. So Here. A little bit more paint here. Didn't get enough paint on that one, so let me try that again. See if I can line it back up good. Better. And then you can come in here with some of these small sparkle ones just kind of in there wherever. A little piece of one maybe coming off here. And just play around with it. I think that looks really cute on there. So I'm going to touch up our background where I got my white with some black. And then we're going to go stencil on our bow. And I probably have to come and do this a couple of times. Clean up my cup while I'm here. go with a detail liner in those smaller places or a small round. Okay, 
I'll come back and touch that up again once it's dry. But I want to move up to our bow now. I want to stencil on it. And I am working on making my own uh, buffalo check stencil, but for now I don't have the I don't have the stencil ready yet, but uh, it should be ready here in the next week or so. This is an M2 square stencil. For, uh, Tracy Moreau and, and Sandy McTeer do this stencil. Um, this is their half inch buffalo check. And I think I want to buffalo check up my, my bow. I think that will be super fun. So we're going to use black. Load up and offload. I'm going to hold my stencil still. Get it where I want it. And then I'm just going to begin stenciling now. On this one it doesn't matter if we get in the background because the background's black. And we don't have to have solid coverage here. I think it will look a little bit better if we you know, leave a little bit showing in the Oh, how fun is that? Oh my gosh, love it. Okay, I'm going to go over here cuz I think I'll Take my eraser and erase where I went over here. Just a wet, wet eraser. This is my tri eraser. I sell this on my website. Just clean that right up. You can do it with a um, brush as well, a wet brush, but um, it takes a little bit longer to do it that way. I'm going to try this. I might have to go back and do up there at the top a little bit. peppermints. Okay, that looks super cute. I think I'll put a few little lines up there. And then we're going to come along this side over here. And I'm going to go to where it curves there. And then I'll move the stencil down. Super cute. I love that stencil. This is one of my favorite stencils, but like I said, I am working on designing my own because I will be needing it for a class. So I'm done with my stencil brush, both of them, so I'm going to rinse them out so that the paint doesn't dry in them. I just clean them out with a little bit of hand sanitizer and rinse them really well. If the paint gets stuck in there, then you want to use some uh, brush cleaner to clean them out. They're a little bit more stiff, stiff bristle, so you don't want to let paint set in them at all. Okay, so now 
we are ready to get a, a layer of white on our peppermint. Actually, I want to mix this. Let's get our oyster beige. I want to do an equal mix. I don't want it to be straight white right out of the gate. So, maybe two white, one oyster beige. Let's do it that way. It won't be pure white, so when we come and add our highlight, our highlight should still stand on top of this pretty well. Two snow white, one oyster beige. Use your uh, clean water to thin this paint, or you'll tint it a completely different color. I could probably go up to a bigger brush here. I feel like I'm working myself to death with this one. I'm gonna have to bring my black in and straighten up that edge. Just one coat of this should be enough, unless your coat is not very opaque, then you may want to come back and do a second coat on there. So we're going to do two white, one oyster beige, and that's going to get them more on the white side, so that when we put our stripes on, we'll have some place to go with a highlight. here again where I got some white out when I was doing my snowflakes. Aren't those snowflakes so cute on there? I love it. Alright, I think I really think those snowflakes might need a second layer, which will be easy enough to do. You just have to lay the stencil back on each one that you did and apply a second coat. I really think they need to be a little bit brighter, but my stencil brush is wet, so I'm going to wait for my stencil brush to dry and then come back and do that. Um, but we're going to start working on the bow and finish it out. All right, we are going to start um, working on the bow here. I think I already said that, but it's a different day for me, and I don't know what I said when I left it. So here we go. We're going to start shading. We're going to start with cranberry wine. This will be a pretty um, subtle shading on here to begin with. Um, but we'll come back and darken all this. We're establishing all of our shaded areas. And with this color, we can walk out just a little bit. I'm going to go inside our bow here. You're just corner loading a damp brush with this paint. I also want to do a little bit, actually I think I'll do it right here. I'm going to make a little dip in the bow right here, I think. Not that we may be able to see that since the black is right there, but we'll create this little area that we'll start working on. We're going to come back and add some wrinkles and stuff in there too, but I need it to dry a little bit before I do that. So we're going to come and do our folds. We're going to push in, that's a V, and kind of round it and pull it out. Here we have another one. Over 
here and do this one. This one's got a little bit of a twist to it. And I'm going to go right here. Beside that edge of the bow. I'm going to um, get a little bit of water in my brush and load, side load, and I'm going to pull some wrinkles into this. other side. Cranberry wine, at least my cranberry wine, is one of the more thick paints. My bottle is anyway, so I have to add more water when I'm using it because it's just a tad too thick. We can't see a lot of that yet because um, that was just our first color putting it in there. I do want to go down the edge of the ribbon and I think I will make the lower edge a little bit darker. And on this part I think I'll go out here on this edge. corner. So for this one, just go along that edge. And then I'm going to go down here on this bottom part. And that's not showing up tons right now, so don't uh, worry too much about it. I do want to have a few little wrinkles on here and maybe a couple kind of coming in there. So I'll see if I can get those to show up with this color paint because it's on such a dark area there with that black. I don't don't know how well they're going to show up. But I'm just going to be up on the edge of the brush, almost lining those. Okay. So we want to get a little bit of black on our palette here. And we're going to mix cranberry wine with some black. Oh, okay. Let's get a lot of black out on your palette because that just went everywhere. Yucky, yucky. Okay. I think I might grab a different brush here. grab one of my old curved flats. Now this is a brush that is no longer available. I haven't used it for a while so I hope I can remember how to use it. Um, there is a company that makes one that's similar to it. Um, this is a silver silk soft curve. The brush guys have this. So I'm going to try this one. I haven't used it for a while. And I'm going to mix my cranberry wine with just a little bit of black. Sneak up on that black. See, that black can just get take over the whole thing. And we don't want our bow to turn black. So we're going 
to start with this color and shade inside here. Go beside this bow here. So all the places we did before, we'll do a second time. This mix. Just brush mix and pick up a little bit of cranberry wine and a tiny little bit of black and mix it in there. And then down here on this bottom corner, I think, is where I want it to be darker. Not worried about the background because I can touch that up. And I want to do down here on this one as well. That corner right there. Our lines. I'm just up on the chisel edge of this brush, just pulling out. Starting to look more like a bow. Okay, I think I want to add just a little bit more black into that mix and create some really dark places on here. We're going to come back and add some highlight on here, and it's going to help. I'm going to shade on the top and bottom of this knot here. So I've added a little bit more black and I just want to create some really dark shadowy places. This time it's mostly black and just a little bit of cranberry wine. So we're getting some nice depth in there now. I think I need to go maybe on the outside edges because I think I want to highlight here and here and here. So I think on the outside edges we'll add some shading on there as well with that mix. Grab some water. So 
I'm not going to go all the way to the top and the bottom. I'm going to keep it kind of in the center of each of those folded areas of the bow. I want to bring this out just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to erase some of those lines on there. Eraser. We don't need them on here now. They're a little distracting. Remember, away from your paint. Don't fling those eraser shavings into your paint. You'll be happy. Okay, so I want to add some highlight on here. I'm going to start adding a highlight with a little bit of, um, let me see. Okay, so my two options are Tangelo Orange and Sizzling Pink. I think I'll start with Tangelo Orange because that's what I normally start with on red. Okay, got my Tangelo Orange here. And see how this is going to look on here. I might just want to go straight into my pink. No, I, th I think we'll go with the tangible orange. So I want to put it across the top right here. I think when we come back and add that neon on there, it's really going to make this pop. I want to go along this edge. We're going to come back with some white on here. But this is just to get us, get us going. Gives it a little bit more of a kind of country look. each side of our loops here, down here on the inside of the loops on the very bottom. We're going to do our knot. back in there. Or maybe I'll leave them off. I think it kind of looks good without them. Alright, I want to go along this edge. It's like that cranberry wine. It shouldn't show up a lot. So it should fade down into that red. A little bit more water here. started with our highlight on there. I'm going to darken inside my loops here with a very sheer wash of black. I want to bring that down just a little bit. To mix that white. I'm also going to put our sizzling pink out.
All right, we're gonna try our sizzling pink. Now, this sizzling pink is kind, it looks very sheer when it goes on here, which is nice. It's gonna pick up a little bit of that orange under there. And, but it will dry a little bit darker and make things really pop. And then we'll come back with our bright highlight of white. You can tell the places you missed because um, you'll be able to still see that orange be a little bit brighter. Again, don't worry about your background because we can touch all that up at the end. And that's making our bow pop pretty good. Let's come back with some white here. And I want this to look um, kind of like a satin ribbon. So our highlights, I'm going to side load for a float, but I've got a little bit extra water in my brush. Wipe off a little bit. I'm going to come down the center here. other side of it. Grab my mop brush, which I should have had out right away. And I'm going to mop down that. Clean my mop brush. And then take a damp brush and I'm going to clean up these areas. Up here we can just come with our black and fix that. Got quite a bit of water in my brush. Okay. If you are terrified to do this, you do not have to do it. You can just go back over the highlights that we originally did. just want a little highlight kind of tucked inside here. This is called a back-to-back -back float. And then we got a little highlight in there. It might come along the edge and make that a little bit more pronounced here as well. Of water in my mop br or in my brush that I'm painting with. And that needs to be brighter because it, it faded down in there way too much. This is really the part that I think scares people the most is putting this. Uh, bright 
highlight into stuff but um, it really does make the ribbon pop and like I said you can just go along and do the um, regular highlighting just out on the edges if you prefer we want to make sure it meets touches each other and that it also goes to each edge of the ribbon. And we can clean that part up with down a little bit farther. Okay, that's looking good. So I'm going to do this side. Now you can wash over your bow if you feel like you've lost some of the red. You can wash over it with um, a wash of the tomato red or a cherry red would be beautiful. I like to wash over my reds with cherry red a lot. It's got a little bit too much of a hard line on it there for me hard line is when your paint starts drying before you can soften it out or manipulate it a little bit and then it uh, I'm going to put a little bit of a highlight Ooh, that's a lot of a highlight I think I need to go back to my uh, flat brush it's just going to help us see what's on the top here Always use clean water when you're using your white because um, you don't want to change the color of your paint. If you use the dirty water, you will completely change the color of your paint. And I like for these highlights to really fade back into the, the surface. That's why I use a lot of water when I'm doing them. Okay, and like I said, you can come along the, you know, the edges like we did the other highlight. I need to add a little bit more in here, I think.
edges definitely need a little bit of highlight on them. Get that satiny look. That's how we get that satin satin look ribbon is by doing those really bright highlights on there. So I think that will finish up the ribbon for now. Um, I think I'm going to work on all the stuff that's in here. So the cup shouldn't take too much time at all. Okay, I think I'm going to take the edge of the with some white and just scooch a little bit of that along our edges, our bright edges. This is very narrow. Ooh, or not. there that looks like a just a solid white line I don't want that at all Take that water edge and you can pull that paint out. And bring it out to a nice thin line there. That one just needs to be brighter. Just going back over a couple of places where I feel like the white really faded down in there. I'm going to touch up around my ribbon here real quick with my black because we're going to get ready to do all of our pine needles and stuff in there and I don't want to have to try and touch up when that is all done. needles all that stuff will probably get covered up all cleaned up pretty good. So now we are going to add our pine and holly stuff. So we'll want to get a detail liner out and I'm going to use a, a 10 liner. Okay, the pine needles will go very quickly because there's only three strands of pine needles and each layer gets smaller and smaller and I like to put a lot of variety of colors in mine. So, but you don't have to do this many colors. I may not even do this avocado one. I think I'm gonna leave it out. So we're gonna go with Hauser Dark Green, then Leaf Green, then Olive Green, 
then a little bit of turquoise. So each layer will have less and less color and then we'll do just a couple of strands of either uh, red or orange to bring the bow color into our pine needles. So let me show you how we do this. Zoom in just a little bit here. Hopefully I won't get you off camera. I'm going to take my Hauser dark green and add a little bit of water into my brush. Thin that paint to inky consistency. And we're going to draw in our lines first where we want to go with these pine needles. And I think I want this one to come down even farther. Here. Okay, then we're going to just start adding some pulling some strokes back in. There's lots of ways that you can make pine needles, and you probably won't even see this first layer at all because this green is very dark and the background is black, and I'm not getting enough water in my paint here. Get it to flow right. Take it all the way up to the ribbon. I like for my pine needles to be kind of long. And a nice flowy needles. I don't like little short needles and I don't like them super, super skinny either. I don't want them fat, but um, I don't like those teeny tiny little needles. So let's go and add some to our, this one here. This is just our first layer. And I love doing uh, pine needles in my crystal. That's a lot of paint right there. Ooh, baby, that was a lot. And you can decide when we add the next layers which one of these is on top, which one is in back. But for now, we just want to get these colors in here coming back all the way. I want to make this a little bit longer. Okay, you can kind of see it on camera before it dries down in there. And then I have this one here, which I think I'm going to have to adjust a little bit. Because I can't see the other line that I drew, because I think I pretty much covered it up. I'm going to turn it right side up when I get uh, these in here. And see if I'm liking that. I think I might add another one over here. Coming out. right side up and one down here okay so we should have five uh, sprigs coming out so our next color will really be able to see these pine needles more so I'm going to skip over the avocado I decided I don't want to use that color and we're going to go with our leaf green and grab some water in our brush and pull some paint out and thin it down to inky consistency. Get yourself a nice, oh, I'd probably like to be on camera, a nice little puddle of this paint mixed with some water. Okay, wipe your brush off and then reload it or wash your brush off because you don't want all that moisture. That's you know, on your ferrule and stuff. So I want to do the ones that are in the back first. So I know that this one is going to be a back one. And we can have these pine needles come right up onto our bow. And my brush is splitting, so I'm going to grab a different liner brush. And this one here, oh, too much moisture, will be a back one. 
So I'm just going to bring it up to about there. This one is going to be probably on top. So I'll just go ahead and do this one next. We're going to put our center uh, stem thing back in here because it's very easy to lose that when you're putting your layers on here. Okay, I'm going to go over here and do this one. I need to do that center one yet. So, let's do it. I'm barely letting the tip of this brush touch the uh, surface and then I'm just kind of flicking it back. Okay, so that was our second layer right there. All right, our third layer will be some olive green. Now, when we add this on here, it is going to look so bright. But this color, I love it because it fades down in there beautifully. And we don't need to do a whole lot of this color. one because that side needs to come over this pine needle. And we got some holly leaves that we're going to put in here so some of this will be covered up. But this is a, a way to show you if you just want to add some pine needles to something how you can go about doing that and I'm usually not too awful careful about you know how my pine needles go on here. You know, a lot of people want to bring them right up to that line and everything, but my line I'm going to add back in here. So I don't worry too much about it. I want to kind of, you know, go towards that, but I don't stress out too much about it. Okay, aren't they looking good? We'll get some shading in there. They're going to look amazing. Okay, we want to add some of this turquoise in there now. I'm going to use this turquoise somewhere in my design. I just haven't decided where, so I want to be sure and put some in here. So this is very sparingly. Just a few little strokes. Just here and there. Don't get carried away. Okay, see, just a few strokes. Not many at all. Add our center line back in here with that Hauser dark green. I'm going to start out here at the end and come in. This is where I could use that avocado because it might show up a little bit better. Yeah, let's go with the avocado. So when you draw your original vein in, you can draw it in with the avocado. So that helps a lot. And then one other thing that's really going to help it 
is uh, one we shade and we're going to take our Hauser dark green side load for a float and a tiny little bit of black in the mix just to darken up to make almost a black green and we want to separate these so we know that actually I think I'm going to put this one behind so I'm going to put a little bit of this color right here a little bit more black in there. Not too much. I don't want it to turn into my background. And we're going to separate. And then this one will be on top here. And of course this one is on top of both of these. So and we can put a little bit of it next to our bow, although we'll come and finish that out probably later after we add everything else into it. And that's going to... Um, help push everything except for this one here. I think I need to add a couple of the strokes back in so I can show it more on top. And just one or two blue ones here. Big fat blue one there. Okay, well we got lots of stuff to put on there, so I'm not going to worry about that. And we can bring that the pine needles down further. I actually feel like I need another one coming down through here. So, I'll just put that in real quick. I'll just go off camera and add this one because it's just the same. I'm just going to go right to there. And just pull some needles and tuck it in right there and then add all the other layers to it okay I got my uh, holly leaves and my berries drawn on here and you can actually have some stems of berries coming out here which would be really nice This one would come out this way. Um, if you would like to do that, you know, it's totally optional. You don't have to do that, but if you want to. Um, or just put berries throughout in here. So I've drawn them on both ways. I'm not really sure how I'm going to paint them in yet. But I'm going to paint in go ahead and work on my leaves and again these should not take very long we're going to paint in with two coats to water two coats of leaf green this is my favorite paint color ever so if you are ever in a quiz to want to know what is my favorite color of Americana paint. It is leaf green. I hope they never discontinue it because it's my favorite. So we're going to do two coats on each leaf. I'm going to go off camera and just finish getting all my two coats on and we'll come back and work on the leaves. Okay, I decided I didn't want the twigs of berries sticking out, so I am going to just paint in these berries with some turquoise blue. A couple of coats. When everything is dry, I'm going to erase my graphite lines. two coats on everything and erase my graphite lines. Okay, I think that will be a nice array of berries in here. 
normally I make my berries orange, but I decided on this one I was gonna make my berries blue so we can have a little bit more playful fun with this. And uh, so two coats, leaves and berries. Come back, we'll get going. All right, all mine are base coated two coats. I have erased all of my graphite lines so we can just see where we need to go here. Okay, the first thing we wanna do is uh, create a center vein in our uh, leaves and we're going to do that with some Hauser dark green. So just use your detail liner, then a little bit down with some water and then stroke in a vein on every one. And these leaves, they're pretty small, but they should go really quickly. So we're also going to take that Hauser Dark Green. I'm gonna use a small chisel brush. This is a size six. Um, just anything that's a smaller brush or a, a quarter inch angle would be fine. Maybe even an eighth inch. I'm not sure how big a, an eighth inch angle really is, so. It might be too small. We're going to shade at the base of all these leaves. And you can kind of go down one side just, just a little bit if you want, but we're mostly going to just stay at the base of the leaves. And again, this should go pretty quickly. These are not great big. What's going to take the most amount of time is when you use a smaller brush, you have to load it more frequently. So that is what will take the majority of the time right there. people who are a little bit slower painters this will probably take you much longer than me I'm a pretty quick painter and I don't strive for perfection by any means so Okay, so we've got the base or the base of them painted with Hauser dark green. Her vein is on there, so let's go with some house or some olive green. Talk. Olive green to add the highlight. Now again, olive green is pretty bright when you first put it on, but it will fade down in there. I love this color. This is probably my second favorite color. And we probably will apply this two times because it does fade down in there. I'm staying mostly on the very tip of these leaves. If you can't tell where your tips are, you definitely want to put a little bit of a highlight on the tip. about that. Hope you're on camera for the shading part. Toe to hate bay. I've adjusted my camera and it's farther. I have to have my painting stuff farther away from me now so it's... I keep forgetting. So I apologize. See how it's already fading back down in there? Not 
not too happy with that one, but I'm going to make these nice soft floats so you have to have some water worked into your brush along with that paint in order to get those nice soft floats. Now see how that's already, it's already faded down in there and it's just looking beautiful. But I'm going to repeat that uh, olive green. And I may not do every place, maybe just one particular place on here. Just give it its bright little Okay, there's our beautiful leaves on there. You can always come back and add a final little bright highlight of white if you would like to. I don't normally, um, but since I have such bright highlights out there, I might come back and just add a little bit of white on here. And actually, I think I'll do it with my detail liner so it doesn't get too wide. You can make it different on each one. Don't make them all the same. And I think we'll take our olive green and add a little highlight next to the vein. This is optional. You do not have to do this. Oop, too much water in my brush. This will make the vein pop a little bit. And this will fade down in there so you won't see it a whole lot. Okay, I'm going to call those all those, those uh, holly leaves done. So we're ready to do the berries. All right, let's add our um, color on our berries. So we want to put out some, um, oh, that's not it. Here it is, a Royal Navy. And we'll use this color and some white are the only two colors we'll need on these. These should be pretty quick. Now, if you have trouble painting small areas, I'm again going to use this uh, number six or I might go down to a number four. I think I will go down to a number four because these are small. What you can do is grab a small round brush. Let me get a small one. Like a number one round. And you can take a brush and put some water on your berry and take your round brush and put some paint along that edge and then just kind of take a little bit of water and pull that out, kind of dance it out a little bit to put some shading on it. But I'm going to use this small little brush here. I'm going to side load this tiny little brush so because it's so small it won't hold a lot of paint I don't want it to hold a lot of paint because it's little if I put too much in it it's going to fill the whole brush up and we're going to do a C stroke on one side of each of these berries actually that C stroke should be right here And we'll probably repeat this because I'm sure that this will fade down in there. And all your berries don't have to be 
looking the same direction. Put that next to the leaf there. If you get paint too far over on your brush, go clean it out because you don't want that paint to fill your berry. I think I forgot to paint that whole berry in. I need to come back in and do that one. So that's our first coat on there. And you really want it to dry well. So if you have a little fan or a little heat gun, just let it dry real quick. These little fans are perfect for a quick little dry. You don't have to put any heat on your surface then. And uh, these are just portable little fans. I sell those on my website. So if anyone's interested, you can go to lanalam.com and it is listed under tools so I'm going to repeat this color and if you're doing it the other way that I showed then you'll just dampen it again and dance your little color across the berry oh I missed one put one coat on this one here. Actually I'll do it on this side. I have to come back and give him a second coat. And these are really super quick berries. Now you can paint yours in with orange if you want and then put a little bit of cranberry wine on them and then a little bit of white and you can have orange berries on yours. So now we want to put white on the opposite side. Again, you want to make sure that they're dry. You're not putting a whole lot of paint on here, so they should dry pretty quickly. that same C stroke. Using a smaller brush is very helpful. And you can come back and repeat this to get them a little bit brighter. But I think I'm just going to add a little dot of white on there. Grab my detail liner and just put a little dot of white on there for a little shine. But you can repeat that white float if you would like to. Okay, so we need that to get dry, and then we're going to uh, shade around everything that's on here. Okay, so we want to take our Hauser Dark Green, and again I'm using this uh, chisel brush. This is the 6 one. I, I did the 4 on the berries. This is the 6, and we want to go around on the pine. And this will make everything pop on top of the pine instead of everything being flat and blending together. We'll go around our berries as well. And if this is not showing up for you, you can add a little bit of black in your green mix. And that will give it a little bit of shadow.
It is really hard with these smaller brushes. You have to go back for paint so often. You really only need to do one one side or the other. Kind of lift it up. Let's see what I've missed here. Probably this one. Ooh, that's a lot of black in there. I also want to take some of this underneath the bow here. And this is going to push everything underneath the bow. This is also a good way to shape up anything that you don't like the shape of. Okay, I think I got most of them that I could see. And we got everything pushed underneath. I did take those off that weren't coming on top of the bow. I decided I want every, I wanted everything to be behind the bow. And if your um, leaves are standing too much on top, you can just kind of wash a little bit of that green and black mix on top of the base of it. And that finishes out our pine leaves and berry. Let's wide angle out so you can see that part of it done. Isn't that so pretty? I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. I think I'm going to add a few little strokes of some orange in here. Could add red as well. It will be up to you. Red, red would be just fine because red is in our just a few. We don't have to really tell where they're coming from. See if I can zoom you in so you can see that. So it's very subtle in there, a little, a little bit of the orange strokes in there, but it makes a huge difference, I think. All right, we're going to work on our peppermint sticks next, I think, because I want to get those done before we do the inside of the cup. So we're going to um, get our red out, which was tomato red. So get some of that out on your palette. Okay. Um, Peppermint sticks. Now you can draw your lines on here if that will help you. I'm just going to wing it like I normally do. And I'm going to grab some tomato red on my one round brush. And I'm going to create some fat lines first. And you can just take it right off of the edge. We've got a black background. We can clean all of that up. Oops, see what happens when you try to be neat. Okay, let me zip in just a little bit. I'm 
make sure that it goes off of the, not off of the edge, but you know that it, it looks like it's going around it. And I started off really swirling it, and then now I'm going straight. So <laughs> that's what happens when you wing it and you don't draw your lines on. So. here as well. Okay, my peppermint stick looks crazy, but I'm going with it. I am not going to stress out about how that peppermint stick looks. So on this one, I'm going to go the opposite direction. Okay, and then don't forget the one in the cup. All oh, my pepper vents are going to look completely different. Every single one of them, but that's okay. They came from different batches. Okay, let's grab the detail liner and thin a little bit of that red down. And then I'm going to put a thin line. Oh, that was terrible. Thin line. And here you can do two thin lines, it doesn't have to be just one. Definitely going to have to clean up my background around this thing. I'm just putting it right next to that fat line. And I should turn to the sound off on my computer because making noise. Okay. They don't look the best at this current moment, but trust me, when we get done shading and highlighting, they are going to look amazing. Okay, let's put some fresh cranberry wine out. And I'm going to go back to my small brush here, but you can go to your um, smaller angle brush or a small flat brush. Um, you can use a six flat. It'll just have longer bristles is the only difference between the two. So I am side loading with some uh, cranberry wine. And I'm going to go down the edges. Next to this one. We'll be going down both sides of this, so we want to make sure our paint doesn't go very far over on our brush at all. Otherwise, we'll fill in the peppermint stick completely with this color. So if it starts uh, working its way over too far onto your brush, just go wash it out and reloaded. I'll get my words out there in, a, in just a minute. <laughs> okay, up here to this one. Okay, now I'm going to go along the other edge. I need 
more water. It's so hard to keep small brushes loaded. That's why I prefer to work with larger brushes. But when you're in a small space like this, you got to go with a smaller brush. There's just no way around that. Okay, starting to look like peppermint sticks. As soon as we clean up the background back there, it's going to going to really make all the difference. Okay, so right here where the two lay over each other, I want to darken that. I want to add a little bit of black to that mix. And, and this is where you have to be extremely small amount of black because we don't want our peppermints to turn black so I like to sneak up on my black when I'm adding it to something I don't want it to go too dark too quick so it's really a dark cranberry color I'm gonna put that right there right here so I want to go around the outside edge with the cranberry wine I think one more time I, I, just to smooth out the color because I don't want any openings on there that distract from it being a solid piece of candy. Again, keep this nice and narrow. I've got plenty of water in this little bit of brush. And then once we clean up those outside edges, it will look so much better. Okay, so that has all of the shading on there. We just need to add our highlighting on there and clean up the outside edges. Our highlight is an easy thing to do on peppermint sticks, but it makes all the difference. All the difference. So we're going to take a detail liner. I like to use a 10-0 liner. And I'm going to get some white paint, and I just want to thin it just a small amount. And we're going to go with a thin line down our peppermint sticks. I have a design that's called peppermint sticks. One of my most popular ones. So there's our highlight on our peppermint sticks, and now I'm going to clean up the background with my black here around my peppermint sticks. can help shape your peppermint sticks if the shape got a little weird. This 
little corner right here. Kinda bugs me. Alright, that's looking much better. Using the wrong side of my brush. No wonder I wasn't laying any paint down. <laughs> Bet you all have never done that. And that's our ribbon right there coming up to our leaf. And I think we look pretty good with our cleanup here. All right, let's work on our cup of hot chocolate here. And then we'll just have our topper to do. Oh, we're getting close to being done. Let me wide angle out so you can kind of see how it's coming together. Isn't it just gorgeous? I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. It's making me so happy. Okay, I'm trying to work out what shade on my cup with. Um, the Royal Navy is just too bright. Too bright. So I'm mixing uniform blue in it, but I might try mixing some black in with it. Because if I don't have to pull out another color, that would be best. I want it a more dull blue. But I also want it to be a blue that is cohesive with the blue over there. <laughs> so I think that's what we'll do. I think we'll mix my royal blue and a little bit of black and get this really pretty color. We don't want to have too much royal blue at first. We can come back and add it in. But, um, and we're just going to keep this a simple cup design. Not going to get too much carried away with it. So let's shade this at the bottom. here on the inside. Come around the outside of the cup. And I'm going to walk that in. This is very light. I have water in mixed in with my paint so I have a little bit thicker than a wash of paint so that I'm not putting too much paint on here. Let me come along the back edge back here. Maybe right to there. Okay, I want to get that dry so I can repeat it with those with that same mix which is Royal Navy and a little bit of black. But I gotta get it dry. So let me mix a little bit more of this color. Wash my brush out because I want just a little bit of that paint in my brush, not a lot. And I'm gonna repeat. Again, this is just a wash of color. Don't worry about getting it on the background. We can clean all of that up. If you're painting this design on a different um, background color, you'll probably have to be a little more careful. Okay, I'm 
brought that over a little bit more into the cup on this side. Still, I'm not getting this side as dark as I would like it to be. This side of the cup I want to be darker. And I'm going to gently mop that while it's still just a little bit wet. So pretty. So pretty. Let's add some white on here. We'll so go along this edge right here. Outside edge of the handle. I would kind of like to make this look like glass, or glass one. I don't know. Put a little bit back here. I'm not worrying about getting on the background. Remember, I can clean all that up. I think I'm going to leave the cup there until I get the cocoa inside done. Um, I didn't want to have to do a whole lot to the cup, so the only place I think might need some attention is down here at the bottom. It might need to be just a tiny bit darker. Let's work on our cocoa inside here. Okay, I've got my two coats on my marshmallows. All right, I wanna work a little bit on the cocoa part that we can see. So I'm back to this small um, flat brush. And I'm gonna take some Mississippi mud because I felt like it was the closest color to hot chocolate. And so I'm going to start putting this in along the front edge, just a soft float of this color before we highlight our marshmallows. And I'm going to put it back here, kind of around. I'm just going to do a little back and forth sawing motion and put it in around everywhere. And we'll probably repeat this.
And on these down here, I'm going to float a little bit of this color down at the bottom. Not too much. We don't want to turn our marshmallows brown, but they need to have some kind of make this as washy as I can so I can keep it light and always come back and repeat it it's a little hard to take away again we can come up and clean the shape of these up a little bit with um, our background color. Okay, so it's dry up in my cup and I definitely want that darker. Oops, paint on the wrong side. And I don't really want to have a lot of moisture in my brush. I want my brush to be just damp because I don't want it to thin the paint too much. at least not up here in the cut part. I want this part to stay a little bit darker. And we can have some lighter areas in there so you can let some of that base color show through. You don't have to fill it fill it in. But we want to make sure that it looks like the marshmallows are down in the hot chocolate, okay? I think I'll go just slightly darker down here on the bottom. So just a quick little shading down there on those. Okay, let's add some white onto our marshmallows. So I'm going to take that other small flat brush. This is a four, so if you've got a four flat brush it will probably work perfect. And I'm going to drag this color on the top of our marshmallows. these down here. We'll do the same thing. Just drag some of the white down on them. We will have to do this a couple of times because white, you know how it is, it fades down in so quickly. This one is coming at the bottom down here. Okay, I definitely have some cleaning up places to do. That little bit of dark color that we put at the bottom, we just barely want to see that. Just barely. Okay, I'm going to get some fresh white out because I want to do that again. paint on that one. 
Right. I'm going to go back up to my um, chocolate color. My Mississippi mud. What is that? That's how I'm using Mississippi mud. And I want to darken my cocoa. This is just a little bit of a wiggle and a jiggle. And just really make it look like those marshmallows are down in that hot chocolate. Oh my gosh, isn't that just delicious looking? And then we can put a little bit of white highlight in here. Our chocolate make it look like some of the marshmallow is melting so you might want to put it around where the marshmallows are that will give it a little look of melting marshmallows I'm going to clean up my black around my cup I'm just going to go off camera and do that because it's around my marshmallows because um, it's the same as when we did the peppermint sticks then we're going to come back and we're going to shade around these marshmallows Okay, let's shade around our marshmallows. First, we're going to separate these two just a little bit. Put a little bit of a shadow here where they're against each other. And that was with our Mississippi mud. And then we're going to take our cranberry wine with a tiny little bit of black. going to shade around these. And shape them up just a little bit. I think this is going to finish up our hot chocolate. This is the white so we can kind of smooth out our edges on the top of our marshmallows. Yummo, yummo, yummo! I love it! So now all we need to do is do our topper up here. I think we'll be done. I might need to shade next here just a little bit. Grab a little bit of that black mix. Now if this had a um, lighter color background we would want to do some kind of shading underneath to set everything where it needs to go. But we don't. Since it's a dark background, we don't have to do that. Oh, we do have to stencil our word on here. Um, so we need to do that real quick. Okay, we're going to go ahead and finish the topper. Now, you can have some smoke steam coming out of your uh, cup if you want. Um, I decided not to do that because I tried it and I didn't like it at all. So I want to, each one of these places that is has this little indent here, we're just going to draw a line straight up. Okay, this is super easy to do. I'm going to take that six chisel flat brush and we're going to float some black along each one of these lines. We'll do it on the right side. Nice soft little float. Okay, 
This one needs to be a little bit darker. Okay, so that is the first step on here. So we'll take this same brush and we'll do white on the opposite side. I want to give those a little bit of time to dry out there. And we'll go white here. And I need some water in my brush. This little brush don't hold much paint or much water. We'll go on the opposite side that we did the black. So that was white. Really can't see it very much, so I want to do that again. Just like I did on the black. Okay, that looks much better. I think I might do my black again because I'm feeling it's fading too far down in there. Okay. My white, I feel like, is faded away in there, but I'll come back and probably dry brush some on there. So let's go along the outside edges with black. little bit softer and then along I want to make sure that black is dry but along the top and bottom we're going to do white I'm going to bring my detail liner in here and line these. You don't need to do this if you got yours dark enough. Mine, not dark enough. All right, and then I'm going to take my uh, small round and drag some white. You can also get some metallic paints and come in and paint this metallic silver or something. And that will finish up the topper. Easy as that. So now all we need to do is stencil. So I made this stencil specifically for this design. You can use any of these words on here. I originally was going to use the word peace. Now if your letters come over your peppermint, just put a little piece of tape there 
and then stencil on it will look like that piece of letter is behind. So no need to worry about that. Welcome. I, I made all these words where they would fit in this section right here. Um, joy, Mary, Comfort, and Love. So I'm going to use Mary. So I'm going to tape down my stencil here. And the words are all far enough away from each other that you don't have to worry about them um, getting on, you know, your paint getting in another letter. But I made it just for this. So I'm going to take my dry paper towel. My stencil brush is dry. I'm going to load it with Oyster Beige. I'm going to move that up just a little bit. i got room to move it. I want to make sure it's straight. Let me hold it up so I can see it. I think I'm going to have to stand above it. That looks straight. Let's hope. If it's not straight, it's just black paint in the back background, so I can fix it. So I'm just going to stencil this in lightly. If you use a makeup sponge, straight up and down, pouncing, no mushing or squishing. Let me load again. Offload here. I think this is going to end up being one of my all-time favorite Christmas designs. And I'm working on getting my own plaid stencil design. I was working on it the other day. It's almost done, so... I think I might have to do this about three times to get it to show up on this black really well. Might add just a little bit of white in with it. Lighten it just a tiny bit. And I think I'll take it off of this thing. There we go. That'll keep my stencil flat now. Don't have to worry about it bouncing around. Okay, that looks pretty good. It's a little messy, but uh, <laughs> it looks a little downhill. So I might have to paint over that and redo it. Because I tried to line up the edge of it with that. Well, maybe it's okay. It's kind of cursive, but I feel like it's off a little bit. So, um, I'm not going to finish this out with this particular stencil, but I'm going to tell you how to finish it so that my video isn't five hours long. I'm going to take my Oyster Beige and close up my letters. There's only a couple of places. You don't have to do this, but I like for mine to be solid in there. And then if you got, if it bled a little bit, take up your black and clean it up. And you are done and ready to go. Wasn't this a fun project? I love it. Let me wide angle out a little bit. I just love this one. So I have titled this one Hot Cocoa and Peppermints. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you think of this one. And uh, happy painting, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and share. I appreciate you all. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.